Hey everyone, welcome to part 5 of the Basic Training Booster Pass Edition, where today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Tokyo Blur on 150cc. As always, we're going to cover the strats I use in my current personal best, along with some easier alternative strats that you can use just in case those are proven to be a bit too much. If you watch my DLC track ranking video, you'll know that I really enjoy Tokyo Blur, and I'm excited to share this video with you all today. Just as a little bit of a heads up, I'm doing some experimentation with some ways to streamline these videos going forward. In particular, I'm doing something slightly different with how I handle the recommended builds, so let me all know what you think down in the comments. Now without further ado, let's dive right on in. For Tokyo Blur, I'm going to recommend one of our usual try-hard builds. Doesn't really matter which one of these setups you use since they're all statistically the same. Now before the run begins, we're going to be holding down the item button so that we'll use a mushroom as soon as possible. Make your way over to the right hand side of the track and then do a left hop into a right drift, which will allow you to build up a super mini turbo quickly around this first turn. Widen your drift angle when passing the turn and then as soon as you build up the super mini turbo, release and start a wide left drift. You want to make sure to kind of line yourself up in such a way that you're moving along with the curb and then keep holding right because this is going to allow you to snag the two coins more easily. Once you build up a mini turbo, do a right hop to release it and then after grabbing the second coin, start another right drift. The goal here is to build up an ultra mini turbo, so what we're going to do is take the turn tightly to start, and then widen up your drift just a little bit to grab coins 3 and 4, and then tighten it up again to build that ultra mini turbo, and then hop and release left. The next section is honestly pretty painful to learn. The basic way to think about it is that we want to do two left drifts into two right drifts, with a mushroom into mini turbo trick off the ramp. What makes it so annoying is that you basically have to counter hop all over the place to make sure and give yourself enough spacing to actually get the drifts. So the actual sequence of inputs is right hop into left drift, and then two right hops into another left drift, and then a right drift, and then a left hop into a right drift. The other thing to pay attention to here is that you want to make sure with that first right hop in a left drift that you're grabbing the third coin from the left. Now, it's not really important to grab that coin per se, it's just that it's more of a good visual cue to have because if you're in a position to grab this coin, then you're more than likely going to have enough space to build up the first two mini turbos without running into the wall. The last thing to point out is the mini turbo trick. You really do want to make sure to release the mini turbo at the same time as you trick off the ramp, and this is for a couple reasons. For one, it gives you a much more powerful trick boost which will carry you further up the track, and then for two, it allows a much tighter line to grab the next four coins. We're going to finish up the lap with a left drift into a right drift, and then we're on to lap 2. Tokyo Blur is basically a sectional track like N64 Rainbow Road, and lap 2 is definitely easier than lap 1, but it might mess with your brain a bit trying to learn the route. Basically, after building up a super mini turbo around that first right turn, start another right drift instead of going left. We're going to build up a mini turbo and then do two left hops into a right drift. Then, we're going to do a left drift into right drift, making sure to grab at least one of the two coins on this path to top off our coin count. The thwomps here operate on a global cycle and may not be in the same position when you get here depending on what your pace is, but unfortunately, you kind of just have to learn where they're going to be based on your own abilities. If you aren't able to grab one of those coins for some reason, like the thwomps are on the ground right in front of you, then just make sure that when you start that last right drift that you grab one of the coins on the final right turn instead. Speaking of that turn, we're going to build up an ultra mini turbo around this turn and then make our way to the left hand side of the track. Just like on lap 1, the lap 2 ramp strats are also pretty painful to learn. It's basically right hop into left drift, followed by a right drift into a mushroom into mini turbo trick off the ramp, kind of similar to what we did on lap 1. But what makes this section annoying on lap 2 is that the alignment is really weird. When you do that right hop into left drift, you want to make sure to take the turn somewhat wide because otherwise when you try and do the mini turbo trick off the ramp, you'll be angled too far to the right. The problem is that you don't want to take it too widely because otherwise you won't be able to build up the mini turbo in time to get the mini turbo trick off the ramp. After that, we're on to lap 3. This section of the track is pretty straightforward, and the only real thing of note is that for the last couple turns you want to do a super mini turbo into an ultra mini turbo, followed up by a super mini turbo with some glider vectoring to finish the run. Now let's talk some alternate strats. First up, if you're running the track without mushrooms, which is likely going to be the case if you're playing online, it is still possible to take that shortcut. On lap 1, just don't do the first drift before the ramp, and instead, after coming out of the left drifts, wait for a second and then do one right drift. Try and make sure to aim towards the left hand side of the ramp because there's going to be less off road there so you'll have an easier time clearing it. It's a similar story for lap 2, but the way the turn is set up can make it pretty awkward to find the right line. Now it can be really difficult to implement some of the strategies we've covered so far, and truth be told, unless you're playing at a really high level already, it's possible to actually lose time trying to do all the complicated counter hop drift strats that we've discussed. In the run you're watching now, I switched to a really high speed build of Wario, Splat Buggy, Crimson Slim, and Gold Glider. Using this build allows you to pretty much ignore every instance of counter hopping on the track, trick straight off the shortcut ramp instead of getting a mini turbo trick, and still only lose about a second over my personal best. There are a couple things to point out though. 
First, for the ramp strats on lap two, what you wanna do is start a right drift and then trick off the ramp. If you build up a mini turbo, that's great, but even if you don't, the drift is mostly for alignment anyways. The other thing is that instead of doing the glider vectoring at the end of lap three, you can just build up a mini turbo and then trick off the glider instead. For the world record, the run plays pretty similarly to my personal best, except that they use the baby build to build up more mini turbos and higher levels of mini turbo. For example, the two super mini turbos into the underpass instead of the single ultra mini turbo that we built up. They also intentionally bonked the wall a few times to try and buy time to build up some of these mini turbos, which is pretty interesting. The only other major difference though is that they use motion glider on the final ramp, which you can see by the fact that their cart goes almost horizontal at the end there. Now that we've covered all the strategies, let's talk a bit more about the track while checking out my full personal best. And if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to click the like button down below so that this video can get spread to more people like yourself who are looking to improve at the game. Okay, so Tokyo Blur is a pretty interesting track. On the one hand, it's really straightforward since like I said, you can pretty much ignore all the advanced stuff and still get decently close to the world record. But on the other hand, there are a lot of places where you can take advantage of small optimizations that add up to save a pretty significant amount of time in the long run. The only problem is that you're gonna have to absolutely murder your hands to learn how to do them. In particular, the entirety of lap one is easily the most difficult portion of the run and pretty much single-handedly killed all my attempts. There are two major issues with lap one. The first is that first left turn of the run where you grab coins one and two. The problem there is that you need to make sure to start your drift at a good angle and at the right time because otherwise it becomes really difficult to grab those two coins. The second issue is in the underpass section where you need to do two left drifts into two right drifts. In order to do that section effectively, you must make sure to do a right counter hop before the left drift, otherwise you won't be able to build up the mini turbo without running into the wall. Thing is though, that oftentimes what'll happen is that the right hop will take you out of alignment to grab the coin, or you'll take the following left drift too tightly and run into the wall. And even if you did all that, you're still in danger of screwing up the mini turbo trick by running into the wall just before it. Laps two and three don't really have that much to worry about. Really the only thing that's gonna screw you up on lap two is again, the mini turbo trick, but as long as you learn the setup that I described, it's pretty consistent, so it shouldn't give you too many issues. Not only that, but you can just opt to not do that first right hop left drift mini turbo before the ramp since it doesn't save that much time anyways. And that's everything you need to know to play Tokyo Blur on 150cc. Hopefully this guide helped you all out, and if it did, again, please don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below because it really does help the video get spread to other people like yourself who are presumably looking to improve at the game. One thing to mention is that I didn't really talk about the easier version of the run in a whole lot of detail, and that's just because, well, it's the easier version of the run and there's not that much to talk about. But if you do want to see a full replay, you can either click on the video right below me or you can check on the link in the description. And last thing, just want to give a shout out to all the people who have become members of the YouTube channel. You can see their names over here on the right, and if you want to get your name featured in the end credits of all my videos and get early access to all those videos and uh, chat emojis and stuff that you can use in my live streams and, and premieres, then uh, just click on the join button down below. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.